it is time. It is time. But in this video, I'm not just going to transfer my little No ID mini Phalaenopsis into Lekker and Self watering from what is purely a sphagnum moss media. I'm going to go in a little more detail as to why compacted sphagnum moss is not of the devil, even though I touched upon that subject in a shorter video without the repot because not everybody wants to watch repots. Still, the subject is of importance because we come across that a lot, especially Especially when it comes to species phalaenopsis, summer blooming phalaenopsis, shock horror, they come in pots packed with sphagnum moss, rock hard. However, the roots are always gorgeous. So why does it work? And what can we do to make sure that we keep our orchid healthy? And then of course, I'm going to be discussing the transition into Lekka from sphagnum moss as opposed to bark and any other organic media. So if you're up for that, I hope to see you on the other side of the intro. And while that runs would you please like the video i would appreciate it Thank you for being on the other side of the intro. Thank you for your time. I'm going to preempt that the comments are there for a reason. Comment away, ask questions at any given moment in time because even though I believe I'm covering something in detail, well, that is my belief. It may not be the case for you. So use the comments and we can take my monologue and show and tell and turn it into a dialogue. So I have a little no ID mini phalaenopsis. She's adorbs. She also has gorgeous little blooms that are highly fragrant and I'm very happy to have her. I don't know who gifted this orchid to me. It doesn't matter if the person is watching. Thank you so, so much. You were probably wondering that maybe I had already disposed of her, but no, I was waiting for her to show me signs. It is go time, not just for a repot, but for a transition into inorganic media. Did the sphagnum moss being so packed in here freak me out? Not one iota. And the reason being, look at how nice the roots are in here. The only thing that's going to freak me out a little bit is to get this orchid out of this pot. While many other orchids come in flimsy little plastic sleeves, this pot, it's got substance to it. I don't want to just yank on it because I have a root tip here. On top of that, my pot has a rim. So <laughs> caution, caution, caution. However, the first thing I'm not going to do is squeeze the pot as normally would be recommended. Squeeze the pot, loosen up the media and get the roots loose from the edge of the pot. If I do that in a case scenario of sphagnum moss only with roots that grew in sphagnum moss only, the risk of crushing the velamen, and cracking the roots is very, very high. There is no underestimating that squeezing the pot in this kind of a setup should be considered uh, a no-no. Sometimes it's inevitable. Sometimes with these very flimsy sleeves, we can also just, you know, cut through because they are transparent. We can see where the roots are. None of that applies. This is a proper little pot. So yeah, let me see how this is going to work. I'm just moving her back and forth on her old spikes that I kept on purposely for this eventuality. <laughs> Sorry for the jiggle on the tripod. Did it. Happy days. And look, it's a little mini Phalaenopsis lollipop. <laughs> but look, do we have any dead roots that we can see? Nope. Now, everybody says, oh my goodness, how have they managed to pack in so much sphagnum moss into such a little pot to make it so tight? Well, here's my example for one. Seeing as nurseries are not exactly inclined to spend a lot of money and resources on such a valuable commodity that is sphagnum moss, which is also expensive in its own right. In this case, they've added a little seedling basket and then just filled around with sphagnum moss, not unpotting her from the seedling basket when she was at the point of being bumped up. So we have two little issues going on here. How are we going to get rid of this moss, which is rock hard? One thing is, of course, to peel it away very, very carefully. And another thing is, I want to show you that this moss 
while it looks good, it has degraded to the point it's just shredding in my hands. Here's the thing, when it comes to these orchids that are potted up like this and we think that the roots are suffocating, you can clearly see where the moss is, there is no damage. Where the little basket is, we may encounter some dead roots. We'll wait and see and we'll find out. But you see, the thing is that they don't pack the moss tightly into the pots from the get-go. They're not going to waste their money on such things. The thing is, they don't repot their orchids every year that they pot up into sphagnum moss only because, again, that would cost them money. So, until they are able to ship the orchid out, the moss is wet, continuously wet, and with that, it degrades very, very quickly. When sphagnum moss degrades, it compacts. And when they potted this orchid up, they didn't have these roots. These grew into the moss, so there was a lot more space for the moss. But you have a double whammy going on here and another root tip. You have got moss that is degrading, which compacts over time, plus huge chunky roots, a mask pouring through. Oh, that wasn't a root tip. That is a root without the light. Anyway, you have a huge structure pushing through the moss, displacing it, compacting it even further, and lo and behold, five years later, you have yourself something akin to what I just pulled out of the pot, a Phalaenopsis lollipop. Now, here's my question. The roots are looking healthy, so it is absolutely not a problem with the moss being so rock hard in the pot. Usually we see the summer blooming fowls and the species fowls come into our collection. Everything is fine, the leaves are glossy, everything looks wonderful, including the roots, which we admire. And then we make the mistake of thinking, oh, my roots are drowning, they're suffocating, they're not getting enough air. Well, what orchid roots want is oxygen, and oxygen is present in water. And they also like gas exchange. Degrading moss does wonders for gas exchange around the roots. So you can imagine that the environment is absolutely fine for the roots and proof is in the pudding. When we get this out, we'll find something maybe that is not as gorgeous as what we can see back here, but we'll get there. So you see, leaving them in the pot until new roots grow and you want to change the media is the best practice in my opinion because you got healthy roots. The minute you intervene and you think that the roots are suffocating, you're going to give them a media that is drier than what they grew into. And that is not a characteristic that the Velayman grew into. It is not accustomed to a drier climate and your roots will fail. They will literally desiccate and dry out no matter how much water you pour into the pot. Unfortunately, a lot of people see these rock hard sleeve pots and say, oh, my orchid has to come out of it. I'm here to tell you that is not the case. You've got plenty of time to wait for the orchid to show you either it's going to grow a new root, extend root tips, anything of that nature before you change the media and the setup. So let's see what we're up against as we go into the middle. I can tell you that I can see the nurseries are getting even stingier because you can see the tiny little pot my orchid came in and they weren't even prepared to put the seedling roots into sphagnum moss. The maximum they were prepared to do was just fill up with sphagnum moss. Back in the day, this whole pot would have been full of sphagnum moss. So this is new to me as well, to have a double whammy like this. We'll just carefully peel away at the little basket and see what comes out. This is where I'm just taking my sweet time. I'm not in a hurry. The only thing to be really careful of is the root tips. We need those because the orchid herself she's not showing signs of any new growth through the middle. This is where you also have to be careful because the roots will circle the little basket at the base. So if you consider cutting through that, be very, very cautious. I do want everything out from the base of the orchid because if that is too high, 
Sometimes I actually opt to leave everything at the bottom as is, just because my roots are more important, and eventually everything will flush out as it falls apart. But the base of the orchid, it is super important to clear that of this sponge so that any wicking from the new media will not seep into the stem. Just gonna use the little stake that it came with. If you're working with a pointy object like I am, be super careful. Don't rush. You don't want to be poking into an existing root. And there, now we have a clear visual of where that basket is and where the roots are. I'm going to get a little bit of water, and this is what you can also do if it's only sphagnum moss that you encounter in your pot. Instead of peeling away and touching and maybe pulling too hard, slosh your orchid into the water with as much sphagnum moss that's still attached. If I hadn't seen the basket initially, I would have taken the entire sphagnum moss root system and all into this water and started sloshing around to dislodge the sphagnum moss. Having noticed the basket, I had to see what I'm up against and where the roots are because we're now dealing with two different scenarios. But you can absolutely take your entire root ball moss and all, put it in water and start sloshing just to release the fibers. This way you're not ripping away and possibly cracking a root. Now, if we crack roots during the process, it can happen, but don't be mad at yourself. But if we can avoid it, and these are little things that I do to try and avoid it, at least to cover my bases. Oh, it's a tough little basket, I can tell you. But we are tougher. <laughs> okay. Whatever sticks to the roots, I'm fine with. It's the base I'm concerned about. Any of that residual sponge, it has to go. Because while we think our pot is dry, or when we flush, or something else, that sponge will always have more of a tendency to stay wetter. We don't want those issues to arise. So you see, your compacted pot full of sphagnum moss, rock hard, still yields excellent looking roots. They had everything that they needed in that environment. Taking them out of that environment prematurely, as in no root tips, no new root growth, that will spell disaster for your root system. So we waited. I have videos about how long to wait, what to do while you wait, how to adjust your pH while you wait so that your orchid can do what she needs to do, settle in, acclimate, etc. before you add to the stress of repotting her and still have a great root system, a blooming orchid that is ready to be repotted. Whether you'd go into organic media and prefer a more airy mix or as in my case, coming right up, lecker and self-watering. So I hope that you're still here with me because I'm gonna tell you another little nugget of intel. Maybe you've thought about it, maybe you haven't. Hopefully it helps. You see, getting orchids, no matter if it's a Phalaenopsis or any other orchid, that is only potted up in sphagnum moss, it's a fantastic hint as to the watering needs of the orchid. Sphagnum moss, highly water retentive, doesn't dry out quickly. And that is a signal that the orchid is thirsty, meaning she wants to have a lot of water, meaning she needs a lot of moisture around her roots. She doesn't want to dry out for any length of time. So keep that in mind. Sphagnum moss tells you what you need to do to keep your orchid happy and the existing root system happy. So because I don't like to have things sitting around, because they're useful and their size is useful. I tried to find a product that will make my not semi-hydro pot 
because there were holes at the bottom, but I don't want it to leak. I've tried all sorts of things and I hope that this product helps. It was like a clay, like a mass type of thing that I had to really massage into my hands. My fingers got all gray and nasty and then I had to press it into the holes and just for a double whammy, I put it on the outside, then I had to wait 30 minutes and well, it's hardened off and I am told this won't leak. We shall see. I have had it with water for the last 24 hours. I've had it in the sun as well to see if the heat would expand the product, soften it again to see if it would leak. It hasn't. So I am hoping that we are good to go and I can use these wonderful tiny pots which are approximately 12 centimeters because even though I could use a 15 centimeter pot, I think it would be overkill. I mean, at the end of the day, we do want aesthetics. Even though I'm growing in Lekka, it doesn't matter. We do want aesthetics. <laughs> and a 15 centimeter pot for my tiny little orchid. Yeah, that would be a bit much. So I've added water to stay with the theme of being gentle on the belayman on the root system. And because my little orchid came in sphagnum moss, I am using small lecker as my choice of lecker size for her. Small Lekka is so much more water retentive. Even the wicking potential matches that of sphagnum moss. There is a dry top layer in my climate on occasions. Sphagnum moss has a dry top layer while the interior still stays nice and wet, etc. That is why I'm opting for small Lekka. Even though the roots are chunky, because I always say chunky roots, chunky media. Well, in this case, my orchid came in sphagnum moss, meaning water retention. If I used larger sized Lekka, there would be less water around those roots than what she is used to. I do not want to lose the old root system, seeing as it is so gorgeous. Right. I hope all of that makes sense. Remember, the comments are there for a reason. So we're going to use the water as a buoyancy to help the Lekka go down very gently and intermingle within the roots. We are also going to have the orchid way low in the pot because I'm not going to stake her. She's so tiny. For the next couple of years, I think she'll be fine. And I'm thinking positively because anything can happen. However, for that reason, I'm putting her so much lower in the pot so that the leaves are my support. Now let's fill her up. I do have a root that it's going to come out aerial unless it changes its mind. I doubt it very much though, you know, orchid roots, you show them one way, they go the opposite way. They're like children, aren't they? Our kiddos. Not in there. So you can see how nicely the Lekka is distributing itself by way of water in and amongst the roots. And instead of pouring a whole batch in and filling up the pot straight away, I'm taking it step by step so that there's no gridlock with the Lekka, so that it actually has the opportunity to go into all the little gaps. If I put it in all at once, we won't, do you mind? <laughs> we won't have that distribution effect. We're gonna have another one fall in there. And just hold on to her. Let her know that you do mean business. You want her right there where you've put her. It doesn't shift around. And then we just continue until we're done. I hope you can see how nicely it all just pools into the gaps where the basket and the sponge center once was. I stumbled upon this trick of filling the pot with water before putting the orchid in just by chance because I was repotting one day and I wasn't filming and I kept water in the pot with the nutrients and everything and I saw how the Lekka behaved and I thought, genius. And since then, I haven't looked back. Everywhere where I can, I always put water in my pots first. Hashtag, be kind to your Valayman. <laughs> Valayman lives matter. Remember please to give this video a like. I would appreciate it. My little orchid would appreciate it as well. It is so important for the channel. It's a wonderful way of supporting the channel. And if you're here for the first time and have not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you did. And what I also do on my channel is if I've made a mistake and something failed because of what I've said in one video, I will do an update and immediately correct that and all the videos pertaining to the subject are then also linked in the description. Now what we want to achieve here as well is to actually cover 
anything white because that root is not used to being exposed to air. That is the plan here. That's why I'm fussing a little bit with the leka around this root right here. This one has plenty of humidity around it. It doesn't really matter, but I need some smaller leka to make a little bit of a protection above the white velamen. Same principle applies, as I was saying before. If it was touching sphagnum moss, the velamen is not made for air. This is just plain RO water into the reservoir. She's had all the goodies before I unpotted her. Last week, she got a calcium nitrate soak into her sphagnum moss. And last night, she got some back to fill in her little tray. And now she's in her little pot. If you stayed to the end, I so hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there were some pointers in there that reminded you of things you already knew, that confirmed things you already knew, or maybe some pointers were in this video that you didn't actually factor in and apply in your collection. Whichever one it is, I just hope that you enjoyed the video. Now I get to wish you a fabulous day. I get to add a condition to that though, that you stay safe. Thank you so, so much for watching. Take care, bye.